Hello everyone and welcome to Scripture Reflections. My name is Reverend Karen and we are going to be engaging over the next hour in a practice called Lexio Divina. You're going to hear voices that are coming from a Zoom feed. These are people that typically join us for this time. In this practice, what we're really trying to do is gather the collective wisdom of everyone who's participating, which includes you who are online. So if you can add your answers in the comment box, if you're comfortable, that would be lovely. Um, so each, we're going to read through the scripture three times, and this is a scripture that we'll be reflecting on on Sunday as well. And each time we're going to focus our reflections, our thoughts, our feelings in a different way. But to begin with, let us create sacred space. And so I invite you, if you have a candle at home or want to create something that just brings you peace, that would be great. This is the second Sunday of Advent, which is Peace Sunday. So let's light this candle, asking God to bring us all peace in this time, grounding us in the love that God offers. We're going to join together in our prayer that we say together to begin our time. This is our Sabbath prayer. So I invite you to join me. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our thanksgiving for a time rich with connections among each other and with you. We thank you for moments when we have experienced what it is to be united even in our differences. Help us to grow as a listening, discerning, learning people. Help us to give up patterns and structures that enslave us and others. Help us to acknowledge our fear and lean into your hope and your courage. Help us to grow in our trust in each other and in your spirit. Fill us with your grace and with your wisdom with your patience and with your love. Propel us into your future, rooted in the richness of our past. In Christ we pray. Amen. So we're going to read through the Gospel lesson. And this is coming from the Gospel of Luke, which is in the Christian scriptures of the New Testament. Um, the Gospels are in order Matthew, Mark, Luke, so this will be the third one listed in the book, even though it's not the third written necessarily, but um, we're going to look at Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 67. As we read through this, I'm going to invite you to focus on how it makes you feel, what feelings are evoked for you as you hear this story. We'll spend some time in silent reflection, and then we'll share with one another. So it says in Luke 1, 67, Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has looked favorably on the people and redeemed them. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of the servant David as God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus the Lord has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered the holy covenant, the oath that God swore to the ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness before God all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare God's ways, to give knowledge of salvation to God's people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, and draw from on high, and the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, 
and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. How does this prophecy make you feel this day? So we'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
So we've read through the scripture once and we've been focusing on how it makes us feel. And so I would love to hear from everyone what feelings were evoked for you, knowing that I've muted you all, but um, yeah, what feelings were evoked for you as you heard this passage today? I guess I could I thought of the word, I'm not sure if this is the word, quietude. 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 <laughs> Interesting. For me, there was a sense of awe that this message, the same message has come down through so many thousand years. Uh, first through our Jewish roots and then uh, the past two millennia through our Christian heritage of uh, light in, in the darkness. And that means a lot to people living where we do because it's so obvious at this time of the year. Um, it gets dark so early now, so we're very aware uh, I think more aware than in the summer of how important the light is. I like the uh, assurance of mercy. I felt I felt sort of lax or soft within myself. I know uh, last Sunday was uh, the Sunday of Advent, of hope in Advent season, but I, I was feeling a sense of hope in this passage. Mm -hmm. And I just looked up quietude, it is a word. <laughs> For you. <laughs> and it's a word that means stillness, so I love that. So thank that's so great that that word has emerged. Swear every time we meet, I learn a new word, so this is good. We're going to read through this a second time now. I want you to hold those feelings um, as we read through it a second time, but this time, pay attention to what word, and it could be one word, or verse, or phrase, is just staying with you. What is, what is just sticking to your heart and your mind and your thoughts? And then during our time of silent reflection, we can think about why that might be. So don't overthink it, just allow it to float through and, and see what stays with you. So again, this is from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 67. And this is Zachariah's prophecy. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has looked favorably on the people and redeemed them. God's, God has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of the servant David. And God spoke through the mouth of the holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus God has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered the holy covenant, the oath that God swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness before God all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the ways, to give knowledge to salvation to God's people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. 
what word or phrase is sticking with you? So we'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
just read through the scripture a second time and the second time through we were focusing on what word or phrase was staying with us and why that might be so i do invite you who are on zoom to unmute yourselves if you're on facebook live feel free to add your comments in the comment box and i'll share it with the group so what phrases or words were catching your attention Well, I still like verse 79, uh, to give light to those who sit in darkness. Um, and that can be interpreted both literally and figuratively uh, to bring understanding to, to people who um, live in ignorance. Um, but um, giving light is uh, very important for me right now because as I explained to many of you on Sunday, I have diminished sight in my left eye because crystals have grown on a, on a lens in my eye. And so light is not getting through to the retina. Um, and fortunately for me, uh, it's not irreversible. And um, I have an appointment a week today, as a matter of fact, um, to have laser treatment to, to um, get rid of those crystals and then my left eye should hopefully return to normal vision. The verse I took was verse 70. Um, uh, as he spoke through the mouth of God's holy prophets from of old and I was thinking like Zachariah there's timeless stories told and retold uh, that give us reassurance and hope. It's kind of interesting because we see Zechariah as an ancestor, but he's looking back to more ancestors. <laughs> I have one word, salvation, stuck out to me. It's mentioned a couple of times in, the, in these verses. And it got me thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> and I kind of know what it means, but then I just brought up, what does that mean in this context? So what stood out for me was uh, the last uh, part of verse 79, uh, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And um, I know that it's uh, the Advent Sunday of peace now, Sunday, but um, it's just kind of struck me how, you know, this is what we're to be guided to, um, the way of peace. That, that's the intention, the way of peace. And um, how are we going with the way of peace at this time of year? I like the picture. I like everything, what, what everybody said, but as I'm reading and reading through this, um, I just love how it comes to the point where Zechariah must be holding John in his arms. And I can, I can see this. <clears throat> and then he drops his voice, his head, to, to his son. And 
new child will be called the prophet of the Most High. I just think that's so beautiful that he recognizes and can uh, share this, that we have it here. To do that. And then I go back to the words, the tender mercy of our God. I like the salvation one too. I like it all. I guess there's a reason why these words continue to be quoted every single year at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. It's true. All right, we're going to read through this a third time, and I want you to hold on to everything we've heard so far um, and let it go at the same time. <laughs> And allow yourselves to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us today, either as individuals or as a collective group of faithful followers. What, what message do you think God wants us or needs us to hear on this week of peace? So again, reading from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 67. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord of Israel, for the Lord has looked favorably upon the people and redeemed them. The Lord has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of the servant David. As the Lord spoke through the mouth of the holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus the Lord has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered the holy covenant, the oath that the Lord swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before the Lord all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the ways, to give knowledge of salvation to the people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit. And he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. What message does God have for us this day? We'll spend some time in reflection and then we'll share with one another.
We just finished reading through this scripture a third time, and this time we're thinking about what message um, God might want us to, to receive this day. So we'll open it up to the group and again and encourage anyone online to, to add their thoughts to this group. What message are you receiving? Um, I find that, well, you know, I'm looking at the different phrases and I'm looking at mercy and tender mercy, guiding our feet into the path of peace, salvation from our enemies. And in that term, I think it means saving us from our enemies and, and uh, lifting up the, the rising sun will come from heaven to shine on those living in darkness. And I just think all together it just says it's a very merciful God that will guide us uh, to a path of peace might not have been the same as in the Bible you know because some some thought the Messiah would be like a great warrior um, uh, but I just again it's just a message that God is merciful he's kind he she kind tender and uh, guides us, and it's it's a very good thing, <laughs> not a punishing thing. That's what I get. Well, I get so much of that too, and I really appreciate the way James had talked about it. And one thing that came to me was trust in the Lord, trust God um, through all of these things, and. Um, just keep on trusting God. Well, I'm still concentrating on that verse 79, the last part, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So God is not promising that peace is suddenly going to appear. Uh, it's something that we have to work toward. Uh, sometimes it almost seems impossible, but um, we can't. We can't just give in, and uh, we have to keep working toward. Since it's going to be Peace Sunday, it's something that we have to continue to work toward and not expect it to come from outside, but it has to come from us. Uh, Donna's image of the parent and newborn child is now just really strongly in my mind. Um, I, I think it's such a powerful image for the Advent season. And it, it's new life, it's just always a source of reassurance and hope in the midst of trials and tribulation. Yes, Carol, and uh, when, you, when you look at a newborn, it's, a, a, it's a, a miracle every time, and this miracle that keeps repeating. I was kind of thinking about um, how it, it just came to my mind and thought, oh, this message, um, the way of peace, has it ever been more relevant? Or, and then I think, well, I, I imagine there's been many generations 
of people that have had that feeling. It's never been more relevant than now. After whatever war or whatever famine or whatever disease or whatever catastrophe um, that's going on. And um, yet, you know, we prevailed. And so those are some thoughts I was having. And, um, the child grew and became strong. He was in the wilderness. And I was thinking about that too. You know, if he, he did spend some time in the wilderness as a child. <laughs> Any other last comments before we close up our time? what you've all shared is beautiful and I look forward to sharing what I've learned from all of you um, and the scripture as well on Sunday. Um, as is our tradition, we end our time together in prayer and so we're going to use the, the Lord's Prayer and we encourage you to use whatever language feels comfortable for you or familiar. Um, yeah, so let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Our Creator, Our Creator God, in heaven, Lord, Lord. hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth Amen. as it is in heaven. Give us this day yes. our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses yes. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us Amen. not into temptation, but deliver us from yes. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for those of you who joined us online. We will hopefully see you on Sunday at 1030. Take care. <laughs>